You ready to film another exciting episode of Real Good at Doing Stuff? I can't wait. Got to be more exciting. I go. can't wait. Okay, good. There we go. episode of real good at doing stuff before we get started today we got an announcement to make um for the longest time we've known that HED motors come equipped with big nasty camshafts today we have big nasty cams t-shirts that are going to be available on the website harrowengine.com with our other shirts but these are coming out today this dude on the back on the front his little buddy i guess that's a little that's a little nasty right there he's on the front but anyhow you can go to the website and get these if you're interested if you can't afford the camshaft you can buy at least buy the t-shirt um and uh anyhow those are on the website as of today or will be very soon um uh today we're going to talk about i guess just some basic wrench turning tips that um i think uh especially newer mechanics not this doesn't necessarily just apply to engine builders but anybody really um and uh if you're a newer mechanic you might want to listen to this because there's a lot of there's a few tips here that if you will apply some of this um i think it'll help you a lot um the reason that i talk about it is because we have to fix uh the end result sometimes when when, when people don't follow these rules and and we've got to straighten out the aftermath but if you'll kind of abide by these rules you may not have to get in trouble in the first place and i wrote myself a little list of things and the first thing would be when you're wrenching on something whatever it be a motor car whatever get the right tool for the job right don't get something that's close to fitting a bolt but doesn't quite get the right thing every time if you get something that's not right your your chances are you're going to damage your fastener and cause yourself a headache at some point or another, right? So it always helps to have the right tool for the job. And sometimes that comes down to the, uh, maybe the length of the ratchet you have. You know, sometimes you need a little ratchet like this. Sometimes you need the same thing, but longer, you know, and sometimes that use that thing on something, you may over torque it. So you may want to back up, choke up to this guy. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, that, Another thing that's super important is whether or not the socket or wrench or Allen socket, whatever, is in good shape or not. If it is worn, like look at this fastener right or this this socket right here. I don't know what you call this. Allen socket, whatever. Um, it's a decent quality piece, but it's really worn where it get gets used out here. And you put that in a uh, well, go look here. Here's what it would go in. And these two have had have been, had this used on them and that will tear stuff up. It slides in there. And next thing you know, you're gonna have to drill this out and you don't wanna do that, right? If you just make sure that your stuff is in good shape, like this one here, it's crisp edge on it and hasn't been worn down. Chances are it'll fit snugly and it'll work. Same goes for, this one's getting kind of wore. It's still okay. but. As these, especially 12 point stuff, it gets flared out and eat up in here. When it gets junky, throw it in the trash or else you will pay the price. Um, same with wrenches, cheap wrenches that fit sloppy on a, on a, on a bolt or whatever. Get rid of that stuff. Um, I'm not saying you have to have the, you know, the latest, greatest, bougiest wrenches in the world, but the, because for years I've done, you know, pretty well with not the most expensive stuff 
but the the cheap super cheap stuff especially if it's worn will cause you problems and you're better off getting rid of that stuff for sure um these things these ball in sockets be careful with them avoid them i know sometimes you kind of got to use them it's the nature of the beast maybe you're at an angle and you kind of got to use this stuff only use it when you absolutely have to um stay away from it because the contact patch that this thing is actually working on down in there is very small therefore it's going to wear uh wear your hole out real quick and it's, then you're going to be in the same situation right so avoid it i know like i say sometimes you got to but try to stay if you can get a regular one in there by all means do so um now with threads when you take stuff apart um very often we're involved in repairs uh that are because people don't take care of their threads when they're re reassembling stuff right um this is something we see almost daily right and what i'm an example of this is say uh, a block when you take it apart let's say you're going to put heads on it you take it apart you bolt new heads on well especially in ls stuff it's very common um, for the threads to be when you take that thing apart after it's been running for 20 years or whatever those threads are in are in sad shape there's just all kinds of crud in there and stuff that needs to come out so that they can function as they're designed to function right so it's a very important to keep the threads of the block or the parts you're working on in good shape and then also the fastener that that's going back in there now this is actually something that you can do fairly easily right um in the block I would say that you need to get either buy like this is a, a thread they call it a thread restoring kit which is a thread chasing kit it's got a bunch of thread chasers all different sizes here it's a great tool to have um uh i can't stress enough that everybody needs one of these now if you don't have something like this you can very easily make your own here's one right here this is a head bolt for an ls i believe just take a cut off wheel and cut you a nice good stripe right down through the middle of that thing you can do more than one and this thing will act as a thread chaser and if you do it right it actually works works pretty pretty good you clean all the crud out of those threads uh, if you have to you can use a tap i would avoid it um sometimes sometimes it's fine but sometimes that they're a little aggressive and they may take some more material it may may make things a little sloppy right um but usually you can do so you can clean it with a by making yourself a, a thread chaser or buying a little kit like this same with the threads on the bolt we got little little thread chasers here for that um and something that we let me show you something that we use here at the shop constantly every shop needs one all right, back here in my grinding room, we have bench grinder. We got a grinding wheel on one side. Everybody knows what you do with that. On the other side, we put a wire wheel. Every shop needs one of these, in my opinion. You take a, take a motor or whatever you're working on, a part, power steering pump, whatever, bring it in here, grab that bolt with vice grips, put on your eye protection, whatever, and, uh, and, and use this to clean the threads. Um, and it will it'll clean them up in no time and it's really very little amount amount of effort you have to put into it and we do this constantly we're cleaning stuff with one of these things um that, and trust me most any any shop has a bench grinder usually you see two grinders a grinder on one end a grinder on the other what good does that do you put your wire a wire brush on one end of these things and use it constantly all right you got clean threads when you're going back together, you need to always lubricate your threads. Generally speaking, a lot of times we'll lubricate under the, the bolt head, but uh, especially the threads to protect them and get rid of some of that friction going together. It's just a good idea. We do it pretty much, rarely I bolt anything together without putting something on the threads. We use tons of this stuff. This stuff works so good, I even wrote a song about it. Um, but that stuff works great. Um, motor oil, anything, anti-seize. Get in the habit of using it. Uh, when you take it apart next time, it'll be a whole lot easier. Um, now, some of this will affect how the thing torques, so keep that in mind. Um, thread 
Loctite type stuff. You'll find that you can, most stuff you don't need it. Um, if, if, if you're obeying the rules we talked about beforehand, uh, you won't need that stuff much. Now there are, there is some stuff where you definitely need, need to use thread lockers, right? Just make sure that you're using the right one. Don't use red high strength on aluminum block bolts or something like that. So keep in mind there's different strengths. Use them accordingly because they can get you in trouble as well. Um, torque wrenches. Make sure they're calibrated. Um, very often we see damage that is the result of an improperly uh, calibrated torque wrench. Torque wrenches seem to, after a while, they need to be recalibrated or checked. It's just kind of how they are. Um, my torque wrenches, I don't have anything special in torque wrenches. They're just kind of run-of-the-mill torque wrenches. And all of them, not all of them, but most of them that I use on a day-to-day -day basis are nowhere close to being correctly calibrated. But here at the shop, I have a calibration tool. I know the bezel's kind of busted, but this is how I set my torque wrench every single time I use it. So it's always perfectly calibrated when I do that. Now I don't reckon, you don't have to buy one of those to do it, but if you live close by, you can just swing by and I'll check it for you. Um, but the point is make sure that thing's in good shape or else you can be doing kind of damage and thinking you're doing the right thing when you're not. Oh, all right, you got stuck bolts that are hard to get out. The first thing you want to do is go for some heat, right? Get you a torch like this, map gas. Don't get the blue one, it's propane, don't have any power. Get something with some, some juice to it. Uh, the yellow stuff is map gas, map gas and it has a lot more heat in it. This works two ways. Uh, sometimes you put heat directly on the bolt, it makes it longer, reduces uh, the, the or, uh, it reduces the clamping force and it'll come loose like balancer bolts and stuff like that usually put heat directly on that bolt the bolt gets longer bolts are springs when you're torquing that thing what it, you're doing you're increasing increasing that spring load right when you make it longer you're reducing the spring load and it, it'll come loose and it'll sometimes you'll you're also be reducing or uh, eliminating your thread lockers heat turns them loose generally um, so keep that in mind and sometimes you want to, like you have an aluminum block with a steel bolt, you may want to put a bunch of heat on the block itself and swell up the area around the bolt. Aluminum swells or grows at a rate 2.3 times steel is a general rule of thumb. So a little heat will turn, you'd be amazed what it'll turn loose if it's done right. Um, speed wrench. All right, go over here to my, look at this bougie box I got here nowadays. There, there, ah. <clears throat> okay. I got speed wrenches. Uh, these are just a good idea when you're assembling something that's delicate, like an engine or whatever. And the reason being is when you're going together, if there's problems in the threads or whatever, you can feel it, right? If you put, if you start to, if you just go to hammering away with an impact, pretty good chance that you you will miss something, right? And uh, you can cause yourself all kinds of grief and at the end of the day you're not going to be any quicker because you're, you're not going to get the job done you got to stop it's just jacked up right so these things even though they take a little time can save you time in the long run and definitely make you uh make sure that you're doing a good job now i'm not saying you have to use those all the time i use the impact sometimes now too especially some of these newer ones these dudes here are adjustable and you can turn them way down and they work uh, pretty good in that regard, keep from hammering stuff. So that stuff has gotten a lot better than it used to be, but I see a lot of guys work, just working on stuff in general and everything's wide open, just hammering away with an impact. Boy, can you tear some stuff up. And turbo V-band clamps, don't use those. <laughs> it, will, it will smoke those nuts real quick. Like you, the, you, those things are stainless, generally speaking and uh you uh run one of those on one time and then take your take your hand and grab onto that nut afterwards you'll know why it's it'll be hot as fire um that's not a good idea um when you're impacting stuff push on to it as you're as you're running your impact gun the reason being is the socket's tendency is to try to push off when it pushes off that's when it's going to do damage both to the fastener and to the socket right so as you're pushing, as you're impacting, push in, 
and uh, generally speaking that'll that'll save you a lot of sockets and a lot of fasteners makes a big difference uh, I think I've covered most everything the last thing I would say is just a kind of philosophical thing slow down a little bit don't work so dang fast <laughs> a lot of times if you'll be a little more uh, studious in your method right work a little slower and steadier um, you'll tear less stuff up and in the end you'll get done quicker right um, so uh, <laughs> I feel like the, the jobs where we're getting fixed stuff most times it's because somebody got in a hurry and 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 they tear stuff up when they're down here um, so if you'll kind of and that just just in racing in general in my opinion if you'll slow down a little bit and be a little more steady there's less errors um, from one end to the other and you're gonna be faster as a result of it but yeah those are just some basic stuff that we see overlooked all the time and if you'll get in the habit of doing those things when you're dealing with any kind of fastener your life will be a whole lot more easier I can guarantee it anyhow that's enough for today merch is at harrowengine.com and will be another video in a few days whatever who cares so, 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 can you can you do